Go ahead. Well, good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you to the New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. We want to say thank you for being with us tonight, and we pray that this service will be a blessing to each of us. So let's be open up in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are and for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this service tonight. We thank you, Father, that you will uh, continue to speak to our hearts, Lord God. And, and Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we have ears to hear and a heart to receive what the Spirit of the Lord has been saying to, to us. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We listen to you, Lord God, this service. We pray, Father, for our men of God and for every person who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for um, the Spirit of the living God continue to move and bring the healing, bring the restoration, bring the um, understanding of your word and the will of, the, uh, of your Father will be revealed into your people's lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we'll have a ears to hear and a heart to receive. And Father, we release the anointing. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are anointing, burden, removing, you are destroying power of God will manifest in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the healing will take place, Lord. Those who need the healing, Father, they will receive the healing, Father, because by your stripes, your people are healed. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We call it in the increase. We call it in the uh, breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Larry is here, so we're going to um, receive uh, from him today and believe that Lord will speak to you, to each of us tonight. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, hello. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Are y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Amen. I tell you, I am Thank happy. Lord. Hallelujah. I am very, very happy today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. God, welcome to New Life of Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. We are in a message right now talking about Christ in you is the authority. Amen. Amen. It's the authority. God Amen. wants you to begin to operate in the realm of authority. Amen. Amen. Because there is an enemy out there, and you Amen. need to know that you have been given authority. Amen. over the powers of the enemy. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We Jesus. thank you for this day. Yes. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. that you that you allow, that you give us ears to hear and heart to receive. Yes. Make my tongue as of a pen of a rated writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you right now, Lord, that we're going to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You know, I forgot my reading glasses. You know, I'm not the only one. I'd be too. I left my bag with my reading glasses oh, on. Oh, God. <laughs> but I got my, I couldn't, it's all right. I could follow through. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank amen. you, Lord. Amen. Hmm. Hallelujah. Not good. I got my Bible there. Father, I thank you for 2020 vision today. Amen. Amen. We thank you. I believe I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you want mine? Do I want your reading glasses? I may not be able to see out of yours. <laughs> it's all good. I'm, the Lord going to give me grace. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so, let's sing that song that's enough. And just turn the volume on it. Okay, the bottom one off. There you go. Cut the bottom one off. There you go. Thank you, Lord. Y'all have a good day today. 
Yes. Praise God. I've left my uh, pocketbook, but I got my keys in my Bible, so I can Thank you, Lord. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my life goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm, almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my life goes in. When the waves of doubt come crashing in, you're my anchor in the trouble storm, Almighty God. And you bore the cross, and you bear the scar. You are my bright and shining star. I might see the kind of man that I should be. You came to die to set me free, Almighty oh, God. And you bore the cross, oh, and you bear the scar. You are my bright and shining star. comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy. You're you're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when the light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty oh, God. You're my anchor in the trouble storm, Almighty God. Jesus, all we worship you, Father. We worship you. We give you glory, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my anchor in the trouble storm. Amen. He's my strength and my rock and my salvation. Hallelujah. He's my everything. He's my hope. <laughs> my rock, my shield, and my butler. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we serve a good God today. 
the God we serve is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. Hallelujah. We're talking about God has placed his authority in you. Amen. Christ's authority is in you. Amen. How many of you, how many of you uh, believe that? Amen. That Christ's authority is in you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I want to uh, just, I want to just, you know, just, just carry you to a place in God today. How many of you would want to follow me today as we go into the Word? Hallelujah. We are going to have a blessed night in the Spirit today. A blessed night in the spirit today. Amen. Remember I was talking to you about the book, about the book of, uh, what they call it, of authority by Kenneth E. Higgins. Amen. That was one of the, the books that uh, God trained me in when he thought walking in authority uh, a few years, a few, uh, quite a few years ago. Amen. It was something that I believe that God wanted me to understand to get in my spirit, because it was uh, from the Bible school that I went for study, amen, at Rhema, and God just taught me about authority in such a, a vivid, a vivid way, you know, he, he, it's just like I could, I could see the authority and the power of God manifesting in those lives of the people that would understand and how to apply it, and so God began to show me how to understand authority, spiritual authority. And so as he did, I began to see the hand of God manifest in my life in a very positive way. And it caused my faith to rise to the next level. Amen. You know, when God began to deal with your heart, it helps you to see and it helps you to know and understand where God is leading you. God is one God. Amen. See, God don't get pleasure in seeing you stagnated. He doesn't get pleasure in seeing you stand in the same place year after year after year. Oh, amen. There always must be, there always should be room for improvement in your life. Amen. amen. Especially if you're a child of God. God wants you to increase and not decrease. In order for you to increase, then you got to have a, you got to have a, your, 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 your vision has to, has to begin to get bigger. Amen. amen. The desire of your heart must be greater than anything that you can than anything that you can actually see with the natural eyes. Amen. Amen. Because you see, God is a spirit, and God wants you to desire the things that he prepared for you to enjoy during this lifetime. You're not going to be around here throughout all eternity <clears throat> walking on this earth. But if you are born again, child of God, you will live throughout all eternity with God in, in the spirit. Amen. Amen. In the spirit. Amen. So we are... We are children of the Most High God, and God is wanting us to see ourselves walking in the authority of the Word. Amen. Amen. Now, and I believe that we will see ourselves walking in the authority of the Word. Amen. So, <clears throat> so as we look at this, we I, I was just looking at the the book that uh that I was sharing with you guys about. Uh, uh, the Believer's Authority by Kennedy Hagen. And uh, in chapter 1 of that book, is talking about the prayers of Paul. Amen. The prayers of Paul. I want y'all to turn there with me, the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Because see, when you learn authority, there are, there, there are prayers that you can pray in the Word of God, uh, that, 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 that that strengthens your spirit. Amen. That strengthens your spirit. And uh, Kenneth Hagin, he, 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 he said that, uh, he said he prayed these prayers over a thousand sometimes, he said. And he said, and all of a sudden, these these prayers begin to, if you as we go through these prayers, you're going to listen to the wording of these prayers, then you're going to see what I'm talking about. But he said, the, the prayers that he was praying start to manifest in his life. Amen. Amen. 
And I know for a fact, because I when, when I heard him say it happened to him, I started reading it every day myself, and it, and, it, and it began to manifest in my life the same way that it manifested in Kenneth Hagin's life. Amen. God gave him the revelation, and so I kept, I, I, I meditated upon that word, and I ministered, I, I allowed that word to minister to my heart. Amen. And, and all of, now, and then all of a sudden, now I had a revelation of that word. See, you can't receive, uh, you cannot receive beyond what you allow your heart to experience in the things of God. Amen. If you try to get something without allowing the word of God to be planted in your heart, you're trying to receive a harvest without a seed being planted. You can't receive no harvest. If I want a harvest of watermelons, then I got to plant some watermelon seeds. Amen. Amen. And if I want a harvest of the word, then I have to plant the word. It, it, it's the same It's the same thing. It's the same way. Amen. So we have to plant the word of God in our hearts so that we can receive the promise of the word, what God promised in his word that, that we can have. Amen. So now in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, and let's look at verse number 16. Verse number 16. And Kenneth Hagin, he was so, he was so, he was, he brought this out so good to help us to understand. Amen. Because he, he showed us that these prayers that he showed here, that, that Paul was praying, he said these are spiritual prayers, and you can pray these over your own life. Amen. You can pray these over your, over your family life. You can pray these over, you know, you, over, over whoever you want to pray them over. Amen. But mainly, mainly you should want to pray them over your own life because, you see, God wants to bring you to a spiritual revelation of the, 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 the authority. Amen. He wants to bring you into a spiritual revelation of the authority. So in verse number 16, in verse number 16 it said, uh, Cease not to give thanks to, for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Amen. That the God of our Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Notice what he's saying right here in this prayer. This is Paul talking. And notice what he's saying right here in this prayer. Notice what he's, what he's saying that God was going to give you if you would continue along this line. Notice what he said, verse number 12, verse number 17 again. Verse number 17. That he that the God of our of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give what? May give unto you, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. The spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Amen. This is what God wants you to have because you see, this is where you begin to understand God's authority. When God begin to, when God is able to communicate to you from a spiritual level. Amen. From a spiritual level. As you begin to draw into that realm of the spirit, as God begin to minister to you, it's going to begin to open up your, all of a sudden, your spirit is going to become illuminated. It's going to become illuminated with the spirit and the presence of Almighty God because of the word that your spirit have now, have now received understanding from. Amen. Because once your spirit receives understanding of what God is saying, it, 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 it illuminates your inward parts and causes, your, and causes you to begin to see the word of God in a new way, like you've never seen it before. Amen. How many of you want the God to use you in these last days? Amen. Amen. So we have to understand what God is meaning by authority. Amen. God, Christ's authority is already in you as a child of God. But until you come to operate in that authority, until you begin to understand how to apply, it's, it's just lying dormant. Amen. And God not only wants to be in you, he wants you to cultivate that area of ministry in your in your heart and in your life. He wants you to cultivate that area. Amen. He wants you to cultivate that area. And, and, he, and, he want, and as you do, you're going to begin to experience the things of God like you never have before. Now let's let read verse number 17 once again. Because I want I want this to be branded upon your heart. Amen. Verse number 17 once again. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, Amen. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your what? Understanding being enlightened. 
that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the exceeding great, and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and and what is the exceeding, what the exceeding great uh, glory to God, what is the and which, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. Now, I don't have my glasses, so if I stumble over the words right now, just, just have to bear with me, okay? Amen. I don't have my glasses with me, and I apologize. That's not your fault. That's my fault. Amen. Amen. But God is showing us right here that these, these prayers that Paul was praying, you can pray them over yourself. You can pray them over yourself. Now, listen how, listen how uh, Kenneth Hagin wrote it down in his book. Listen how Kenneth Hayden wrote down his book. He he personalized, he, he made it personal. It wasn't just prayers that he was reading. He made it personal. He made it, he prayed those prayers over his own life. Amen. Over his own life. He made it personal. Now notice how I'm going to read it this time. Because you see, God wants you to get a hold of this because you see, as you do, it's going to begin to minister to your heart. And Ephesians chapter 1, the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse number 6. Now we're gonna we're gonna read it. We're gonna make it personal. We're gonna make it personal right now. He said, "I cease. I, I cease not to give thanks unto you, talking about God, making mention of you in my prayer." Amen. Amen. Verse number seventeen. This is we are making it personal. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. In the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Glory to God. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what is the exceeding uh, glory to God? That you may, under, that you may understand Being enlightened, that you understand, that you understand, and being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the ex, and what is the glory of his inheritance, and in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to toward us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and and sent him at his own right hand. In heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Amen. Now, I want you to look at it from another standpoint now. I want you to look at it from another standpoint. Here we go again. Glory to God. Because, see, I want you to see what God is going to do in your life. And, and, and now, I'm going to take this verse now. I'm going to take this verse. And I'm going to make it personal. I'm going to make it personal. Now notice what it said right here in, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 16. It said, cease not. So I'm going to say, I cease not. I cease not. Amen. I cease not to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayers. I'm talking to you saints. I cease not to give thanks to my heavenly Father for you and make a mention of you in my prayers. Amen. Verse number six, verse number seventeen. That that the God of, of my Lord, see, I said my Lord instead of our Lord, I said my Lord. That the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto me. Notice what it said, may give unto me the spirit of wisdom. What am I doing? I'm making it personal. I'm making it personal because I want God to give me the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him. Amen. I want him to give it to me. And this should be all of our desire. Amen. This should be all of our desire. Is that it's and so I, I pray. And so I think, I think, I think say, that God wants us to have this. Verse number 17 again. That the God of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto me the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding. The eyes of my understanding are being enlightened. That I've been, amen, 
that I may know what is the hope of his calling and what and and the, and and what is the rich what is the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believe according to the workings of his mighty power amen so what I do I made it personal because I want God to make it I want I want this scripture to come alive in my heart amen so as you read that you make that you make that that's a prayer that's a spiritual prayer that Paul prayed amen over if over the church of Ephesus Ephesians amen and that's and God and, and God there's no distance in the spiritual realm and there's no time uh, limit on how many people can use it Amen. Just because Paul used it don't mean that it can't be used again. If it could not be used again, it would not be in the Bible. God wants you to understand the authority that he has given you. Amen. He wants you to understand it. He wants you to begin to walk in it. Amen, amen, amen. So he says, the authority of the believer is, uh, is unveiled more fully in, in the book of Ephesians than any other uh, epistle written to the churches. Amen. Because this book is based on Ephesians. Let me encourage you to read this. Read this first three chapters over and over and over again for the next several days. Amen. And what am I reading from? I'm reading from this book right here, right now. Amen. The Book of Authority by uh, Believers Authority by Kelly E. Hagan. Amen. Because God want us all to come to the knowledge of the believer's authority. Amen. Because we're coming closer. We, the, the time is winding down. We're coming deeper and deeper into the last days and darkness is, is trying its best to take over everything. they they pushing these ungodly laws yep. in every yep. area that they can push them right now. Amen. And if you don't understand who you are as a child of God, if you don't understand the authority that's been invested in you as a child of God, you will not be able to stand up against these powers of darkness. Amen. You're going to give in. You're going to compromise. You're going to, you're going to say, well, whatever will be, will be. And that's not the way we should be talking as children of God. Amen. That's not the way we should be talking. Amen. We should, we should declare what God has said regardless of what's going on. We should declare what God has said. And we should not back down just because someone thinks, Someone thinking that you want to violate their their rights. What right do do they have other than Amen. the right to Amen. to uh, uh, repent? Amen. Amen and serve God. We have a we have an obligation as children of God to be light, Amen. to be a light, and not to settle for the darkness that is coming upon the land. The darkness coming upon the land is like a big old tidal wave. I mean, it's covering everything in its path. Right. It's just like a big tidal wave coming off the coming off the Pacific, amen. And it's covering everything in its path. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And we are the light. And I see in this tidal wave, I see in this tidal wave as it come as it coming onto land in this big old wave of amen. darkness that is coming. Everything that can be brought under the darkness is going to be brought under the darkness. I, folks, I see this in the spirit. Amen. I see this in the spirit. Amen. And God is saying to us, prepare my people for the end of all things is at hand. Amen. So when we, when we come to the area to understand that authority is ours, then folks, we, we, we need to learn what God is saying and, 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 and and, and begin to take a hold of it. If you don't understand it, just start praying, God, help me to understand because this is way beyond what I'm used to. Amen? <clears throat> just because you're hearing something that you're not used to hearing doesn't mean that it's not true. <clears throat> Amen? Because God wants to install and still within you a word that will bring you to a place in him that you've never been before. Amen. See, you will notice that through these scriptures that I'm sharing with you, Amen. see, I'm telling you, and, and let me let me just tell you like this too. 
the spirit of deception is working overtime and there's a lying spirit out there, folks. I mean, it's a great line, it's a big line spirit out there. Amen. And they will and they will cause everyone that they come around to believe a lie and condemn someone for a lie. Amen. A lie. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And the next thing you know, see, and, and it's nothing but the enemy. It's nothing but the enemy because the enemy, his job is to, John 10, 10 said, the thief could not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. He said, but I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. And that's why it's so important that we understand God's spiritual authority right now. Amen. Because these lying spirits out there will tell a lie on you and try to make everyone believe that this lie is true. Amen. Amen. To try to turn people away from you. Trying to isolate you so that he can destroy you. When you know there's some lies being spread about you, don't sit back and just say, well, whatever will be, will be. You better start praying. You better start seeking the face of God. Amen. That God will have mercy on those people that spread no lies. Otherwise, they're going to start dropping like flies. Especially if you're an anointed person of God. Because God said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Amen. 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 So we have, to be, we have to be careful how we spread lies on people and try to cause everyone to believe a lie. Amen. The spirit of deception is not something to joke with, not something to play with. Glory to God. So when we begin to operate in the spirit realm of authority, we can exercise divine authority by speaking to the principalities to the powers and to the rulers of the darkness of this world and against the spiritual wickedness in high places, what are we going to speak? We're going to declare what God has said. Hallelujah. We're going to declare what God has said. God has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So we're going to say what God has said. And I want you to understand something here. That God is with you and if God is with you, who can be against you? No matter what they do, no matter what they say, who can be against you? Amen. I want to show you another uh, prayer that Paul prayed, another one of the spiritual prayers that Paul prayed in the book of Ephesians. Amen. Did y'all see, did y'all, did y'all get, get that out of that one I just showed, shared with you? See, you need to understand that these spiritual prayers that Paul prayed, you can still apply them today. You can still apply them today because the spiritual authority is yours. Amen. It's yours to exercise now in this life. Amen. Now in this life. Just because it was given over 2,000 years ago don't mean that you can't use it. Amen. Salvation was given over 2,000 years ago too. And you still use it, don't you? Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we have to understand what God is saying to us because, see, God wants to bring us into a place <clears throat> where we will experience everything that he desires for us to experience in this life right now. There's an enemy doing everything he can to stop you from, from, that, from that happening, to stop that from happening. But I believe that God is about to shake this place like never before. Amen. 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 See, God is going to, God is going to have a people that's going to be walking in supernatural revelation. And, he, and, they're, going to, and they're going to experience the power of God over the powers of Satan. Amen. Amen. Because, you see, that's who we are. Now, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 3, that's another one of those spiritual-led prayers that, that Paul prayed. Amen. There's another one of those prayers that Paul prayed. And, and as we get a hold of this, we're going to see that, that God is God has wanted us to uh, all to begin to understand spiritual authority. And Ephesians chapter 3, amen, verse number 14, verse number 14 it says, are you there? I'm going to give you a second, amen. Okay, if you, if you can't get there right now, just write it down so you don't 
So you can always get back and read it. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 14, we're going to read a few verses here. We're going to read a few verses here. Amen. And it says right here, for I it said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you, notice what he said, that he would grant you. Now, who's Paul pointing toward? He's, he's, he's focusing on you, the believer. He's focusing on the believer. Amen. He's focusing, he focusing on the church. Amen. At, 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 at Ephesians, at Ephesus. He's focusing on the church. So he's praying that this is Paul praying over the church. He's praying over Ephesus. He's praying over Ephesians, the Ephesian church. Now notice what he said, verse number 14 again. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye been rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all, notice what he said, with all the fullness of God. With all the fullness of God. Amen. See, that is another spiritual prayer that Paul prayed. And this is something that we should be willing to study and, <clears throat> and to allow our spirit to become acquainted with. Because if we do, if we, if we study this and allow our spirit to become acquainted with this, it's going to cause your spiritual awareness to become more, uh, more sensitive to the things of God. Amen. You become more sensitive to the Amen. things of God. Amen. Because God wants you to have an understanding of his word. Amen. <coughs> God wants you to have an understanding of his word. Glory to God. <coughs> Amen. And so now... As we have read that, I want you to I want you to translate that and make it personal, make it a personal prayer, Amen. Not just a prayer that Paul was praying to Ephesus to Ephesians, Amen. But let it be a prayer that he's prayed over you personally, Amen. That he has prayed over you personally, <clears throat> and then once you can do that. Then you can start doing it daily over your over your own life. Amen. You can start doing it daily over your own life. Why? Because I believe that if you do, that it's going to help you. It's going to cause you Amen. to begin to see yourself in a in a way with God like you've never seen yourself. Because you remember in the book of Genesis when God created man, God created man in His image and after His likeness. And in John chapter four. At main, verse number 23, I think, he said that God is what? God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And so when we tap into the spirit realm, and when we begin to uh, see ourselves the way God sees us, God going to see us walking in authority. Now it's time for us to see ourselves walking in authority because there's an enemy, and I, I keep telling you Amen. that... Uh, that he's, that he's out to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. And you have a, an upper hand today. Because God has given you some tools. Oh my God. He has given you some tools. And if you would take advantage of these tools that, that, he's, that he's shared with you. You would not be overcome by the power of darkness. But you will be an overcomer. Amen. Amen. You will not be caught in these things, but you might you and, and, and he try to hold you uh bondage there, but you will go 
even though you, even though he, he tried to trap you, he can't hold you. You just going through these things. Mm -hmm. See, I like you said like this, like Joel Osteen. Uh -huh. He didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't come to stay. Uh -huh. It came to pass. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. What came to pass? Everything that the devil meant for harm toward you. Amen. Everything that he did to try to stop you, try to slow you down. Everything he did try to hinder, block, and stop your progress that God was doing in your life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It did not stop you. Amen. It, 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 you, you, you didn't just stop and just, just camp out right there in, the, in, in that area of, 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 of feeling defeated or despair. Amen. You went through it. Amen. Amen. And God is still bringing you through those things today. You're still, you're still going through today because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Than he that is in the world. The turning, he said, now Kendall Hayden said like this, when he, when he discovered these prayers, that these were spiritual prayers that Paul was praying over, over, over the church of Ephesians, when, this is what Kendall Hagen said. He said, for, the turning point in my life came when I prayed these prayers for myself more than a thousand times. He said, I started to, I started by reading them out loud, beginning with the first chapter. I personalized these prayers by saying, me, wherever Paul said you. He said, I personalized these prayers and I, and I added me everywhere that Paul said you. Amen. And uh, for example, in reading Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 14 and through 17, he said, I would say, he said, I would say, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me now notice how I'm changing this. I'm making it personal. Amen. Instead of saying, instead of, instead of saying you, I'm saying me. In Ephesians chapter 3. Amen. Amen. I'm saying me. Everywhere it says you, instead of saying you, I'm saying me. Because I'm making it personal. I'm, a, I'm speaking this over my life. Amen. So let me just do it again. It's, let me just do it again. He said, for this cause, verse, for verse number, verse number, uh, one, I mean three, right? uh, verse number 14, 14. chapter three, mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter three, verse number 14. Amen. Are you, are you there? Yes. Okay. Now notice what he says here, because in, in the, the Bible says it this way, for this cause, I bow my knee unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he will grant you. Notice that, that he will grant you. Amen. That he will grant you. Oh, now you need to, you need to circle that you and put me above it. Amen. You need to circle you and put me above it. Amen. Because you need to you need to make it personal. Amen. Amen. You need to learn how to make it personal. Amen. You can put an underline in or you can circle it, but mainly put me above that so you can Amen. so you can apply this to you when you're reading it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, you read along with me in your Bible, and you're going to see the difference in, in what it's saying from the way I'm going to be reading it. Now, now, notice what it says again. He said, for this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in my inner man. In my inner man. That Christ may dwell in my heart by faith. Amen. Amen. I, you know, he said, I spent time. I spent much time praying these prayers, these, these two prayers over on my knees. Amen. And that's and I'm, I'm telling you, if you do the same thing, it'll revolutionize your spirit. It will cause you 
to understand some things like you never understood before spiritually because it's going to cause your spirit to become alert. To become alert. Amen. And then in the, in, 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 in uh, when we're talking about, see, he said, I spent, I spent six, six months praying this prayer, praying this way during the winter of, two, of, of 1947 and 48. Amen. Then the first thing I was praying for started happening. He said, the first thing I was praying for started happening. What was the first thing he started, he was praying for? Let's go back to the book of Ephesians. Go back to the book of Ephesians. And look at verse number 17. You're going to see the first thing that, that he was praying for. Because, <clears throat> because he said the first thing he thought he, that he was praying for began to happen. Amen. Verse number 17, he said that... That the God of, of, our, of, of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ <clears throat> would grant me wisdom. That's right. That's right. And he said, These are the first things that started happening. Amen. Amen. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would may give unto me the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. See, that's what, that what started happening in his, in his ministry. The spirit of wisdom. And then he said, and revelation. The, the spirit of revelation. Amen. And then the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of word of knowledge. These are the things that started happening in his life. Amen. After praying these prayers over his life for a period of time, he began to see results. Amen. He began to see results. Amen. And so when we begin, as we as we are praying these prayers over our life, amen, you're going to begin to see results. If it worked for him, and it was good enough for Paul to preach it to the church of, of Ephesians, it's good enough for the church today. Amen. It's good enough for the church today. Because you see, you're not going to rise in your spiritual quest to understand more of God's word then you allow yourself to to be influenced by God's word amen God word is full of life and if you would take this seriously if you would really take this serious seriously this word will transform your life it will transform your life and it will cause you to come to a place in him that you've never walked in, but you read about it in other people's lives. But all of a sudden, you start to see yourself walking in this area where God's name is being glorified because you dare to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You see, God wants us to come to a place that when we look at the when we look in the, in the book of Genesis at the creation being spoken into existence, he wants to see the power that was displayed through the voice of words. Amen. And God has placed that same spirit that he spoke the worlds into existence, that same spirit lives in you. It lives in you. You have the ability, if when you begin to understand the spiritual authority, to speak, and it'll stand fast. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The God that we serve, he's, he, he, he's bigger than any situation that we will ever encounter. He's mighty. He's almighty. Glory to God. He's God all by himself. And he's not going to get nervous just because we begin to uh, understand what the word says. He's going to begin to perk up. He's going to be saying, oh my God, they are coming to the knowledge of who I am and who I am within them. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
See, he wants you to know who you are in him. Because it's in him that you live and move and have your being. God wants to bring you to a place in him that you've never walked. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, we must, we must have this spirit of wisdom and revelation of Christ and his word if we are to grow in the things of God. He said he read these prayers many times over and over in his, in, 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 when he learned his revelation. And he said the first thing he started reading began to appear in his life. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, and the spirit of knowledge. knowledge. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Glory to God. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Because God wants you to come to that same place. He said, he said, he said, his wife, he said, he said, my wife, what? He said, he, he said, I said to my wife, what in the world have I been preaching? <laughs> he said I was he said I was I was so <clears throat> ignorant of the Bible Amen. of the Bible it's a wonder the deacons didn't have to didn't, didn't have to come by and tell me to get in out of the rain <laughs> he was so caught up when he learned that revelation of Amen. what the word of God did in his life Amen. hallelujah and God want to do the same thing in your life. Amen. He want to do the same thing in your people. People after people often people often want to know how to pray for Amen. Christians, fellow Christians. Mm -hmm. How do you pray for your? How do you pray for someone that you love? How do you pray for someone? I'm showing you right now Amen. how to do it. These scriptures that I'm sharing with you will bring you to a place where you will experience the Spirit of God like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Now, I know that we are just getting started, and it's, it's, we've been teaching on this for how many weeks? For four weeks now? And I, and I still feel like I'm just getting started teaching on this thing. I still feel like I'm just getting started teaching on this thing. Because you see, the believer's authority, God, thank, thank God we have a authority over the devil, over evil spirits, amen, through Jesus Christ. We need to understand what Paul said here in the light of, in the light of what he wrote to, in, the, in the previous chapters, amen. We need to realize that we have authority through Christ. We need to understand that. We need to realize that. Amen. Over, oh, we, we have authority in Christ to come back with the, the devil, to, 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 to stand against the devil. Not to, not to play along with whatever the devil want to do, but to stand against the devil, to raise war against the devil. Amen. When he come against you like that, you don't have to take it just, just because he tried to dish it out to you. Amen. You don't have to sit there and just take it. When you understand the authority that God has given you, you're going to be able to. You know what? You know what soldiers do when they go to war? They go into combat. They go into combat. So God wants you to go into combat with the devil. Always, no, always should be. When you go into combat with the devil, you always should be with the with the consciousness that we have authority over him. We should always. Be aware of our authority over him. Amen. Because he is a defeated foe. He is a defeated foe. Nothing that he can do can turn you away from God unless you allow it. Amen. Unless you allow it. He's been, he's a defeated foe. The Lord Jesus Christ defeated him for us. And all we have to do is walk in the victory that Christ has already run for us. Amen. However, the authority of the believer is an aspect of the Christian walk that few believers know much about. 
Not too many people know about this because they don't they don't they don't want to uh, stir up things in the spiritual realm around them. They don't want no difficulties. They don't want to feel the pressure. And believe it or not, they already been taken advantage of because you see, because of ignorance, people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. So we already see that God is, God is bringing us to a place of, of, to understand who we are. And as we begin to understand who we are, we need to begin to walk in the power and the authority of that word. See, he wants to continue to defeat us anytime he wants to. That's how come he, want, he don't want you to understand this message that I'm sharing with you right now. He wants to be able to defeat you anytime he wants to. He don't want you to understand that you've been given power over him. He don't want you to understand that you have authority over him. He wants you to walk around like a he won't he won't be able to walk around you like a doormat. He wants you to be his doormat. He wants to continue to walk over you. And God said, Time out. Amen. Time out. And he's gonna call and see you you all out in the ball field playing all right now. Now God said, Time out. He said, Huddle up. He called everybody into the huddle. You know when they, you know the ball game when they, when they want to discuss the, when they want to discuss the new the new uh, 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 rules they they gonna they gonna implement in the game. He said time out, and then he called everyone together. He said everybody come up here now. Everybody come up here. So God is calling everybody together now. Amen. Now he's giving you the instructions on how to proceed in life in Christ. He's giving you the instructions on how to proceed, how to continue on in life in Christ. He said, he's telling us, now I am revealing to your spirit the position of divine authority. I have placed it within you and I'm bringing you into remembrance of all that I have given you. And now as we go back into the playing field, as we go back into the playing field, I want you to begin to implement the strategies that I have showed you and I want you not to give up. I want you to see yourself as a winner, as an overcomer. I want you to see yourself defeating your opponent and not allowing your opponent to defeat you. Now, everybody understand this, right? Amen. And so he said, let's clap. And let's go back into the ball field. Amen. And let's win this Let's win this game. Let's win this game. Hallelujah. Amen. And the coach is Jesus Christ. He's on, the, he's on the sideline watching. And he said, that's right. That's right. Don't. Uh, you watch that tight end. Or don't let them get around you. Amen. Amen. You, you, you watch that quarterback. Don't let that, don't let that, don't let that man get through that, 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 that line of scrimmage. You watch that quarterback. You hold that line. Why? Because if you don't hold the line, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. And God does not want us to lose anymore. He said, time out. <laughs> Hallelujah. And my time is up for today. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word today. We thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of authority that you are imparting to us as your children. And we know that we are not alone and that your word will manifest as you have purposed it to operate in our lives. And so we thank you and we praise you for it right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, every person that have, that have been with us through this message and have heard this message, I pray, Father, for a hunger and a thirst for righteousness to rise up within them. Oh, God, may your name be exalted and may your name be glorified in our lives. 
We thank you. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, God has given you authority. I'm not done with this lesson. I know that this is the lesson full. But folks, I feel like I'm just getting started on this lesson. I feel like I'm just getting started on this lesson. Amen. Amen. So Tuesday night, Mr. Uh, uh, on Tuesday nights, which because next Tuesday we'll be back on Tuesday night. We, I had I did it tonight because I had to be out of town last night. <clears throat> but Tuesday nights we're gonna we're gonna continue teaching on authority because in my heart, I mean I I really sense in my heart that this is what God wants. This is what God wants, and so we're gonna continue. Along the line, because I feel like I'm just getting started on this, and I'm, and I've been doing it for four weeks already. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But anyway, we're gonna start. We're gonna do it again on next Tuesday. It's time to take our evening offering. It's time to take up our evening offering. Hey, hon, you got a checkbook with you? Write a check for that amount that you saw in that thing today. Uh, the ties on that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to his name. People that are going to be given through the internet, uh, you please go to my website, libraryministry.com. Pretty soon I'm going to have it set up so you can just do it right there on the Facebook where you're viewing us at. Amen. That you may be able to give right there. But right now, if you don't mind, just go to my website, libraryministries.com. Use your ATM card or your credit card and you may plant your seed there. Or you may, you may write a check and make it payable to Library Ministries at P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. That's, again, that's Library Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Glory to God. And we believe that as you sow your seed today, that you, be, that you believe in this ministry and that God's hand rests upon you. Amen. Father, we thank you for this tithe. We thank you for this offering. We speak blessings over this offering, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We, bleak, we speak blessings over the people that have given, Father. And I'm asking you, Father, to multiply it back into their life. Let them not experience lack. Let them not experience want. Let them not experience uh, 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 defeat in their finances. But God, let them begin to experience abundance of overflow because father as we give you said it shall be given unto us good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give it to our bosom so father i release the spirit of overflow back into the heart of your people that is sowing in this offering today in the name of jesus christ our lord amen god bless you amen glory to god you may be right with us today you I know that you all are here. I've already asked Jesus Christ to come in your hearts. But maybe there's someone that will listen to us right now over the internet. They never asked Jesus Christ to come into their heart. So they need that same opportunity that you had. Amen. They need to ask Jesus Christ to come into their hearts also. So let's give them that opportunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. That you are dealing with their heart, Father. They are in the valley of decisions. And Father, today they're going. To, some some is going to make a decision for eternity right now. Amen. So Father, as you touch their hearts, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you if you that person that God is dealing with their heart today, I want you to say this prayer with me. But I want you to say it from your heart. I want you to say this prayer with me. But I want you to say it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Renew in me a right spirit. And create in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you died for my sin. Today, I receive you in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. That's a simple prayer. But believe me, folks. 
It's scripture and it works. Amen. It is scripture and it works. I'm going to pray that God touch your heart, those that said that prayer, and that from this day forth, that you will know that you know that you are born again. Now, the next thing you need to do is find you a good New Testament Christian Bible church. Amen. Or one that is preaching the, the whole gospel, the full gospel. And go to that church. And, and if you don't want to go to that church, ask God, God, what pastor did you have ordained to, to speak into my life? What church did you have me to attend? Amen. And then when God speaks to your heart, then you go and be faithful to that church. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to pray for you guys now. Come on. Who, who, did, who need prayer? Listen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister. I thank you, Father, for divine help and healing. I thank you, Father, that you have raised her up, Father, from, her, from that affliction that was on her body. And God, I thank you for that. Now, God, continue the work that you're doing in her life. I call her delivered. I call her safe. And I call her free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Amen, amen. Jesus. Don't worry about her. Go ahead. Father, we thank you for it. Let's, let's all stand. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for those that have been with us today. As we have spent time in your word, I ask you, Father, let this word not fall to the ground, but let it minister life to those who had ears to hear. I bless your people now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again on next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.